Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Oklahoma Hall of Fame Gaylord Pickens Museum Discovery Days. Um, first up, thank you, of course, to our free family fund sponsors, the Chickasaw Nation and the In As Much Foundation. So thank you to those. And here at the Oklahoma Hall of Fame, our mission is telling Oklahoma's story through its people. So here we have a nice picture off the front of our building. And today we are featuring Reed Drummond as our Oklahoma Hall of Fame member for today. So she started her career as a blogger on Life on the Ranch and now has her own cooking show, The Pioneer Woman, you might have heard of it before. Um, she has a store in Pahuska, Oklahoma, which features all kinds of fun things, including holiday recipes and gifts. So this is a hint at maybe our theme today. Drummond spends most of her time with her family on the ranch in Osage, Oklahoma. So um, today we are reading the 12 days of Christmas in Oklahoma because Reed Drummond sells Christmas related um, merchandise at her store in Pasca. Um, so we are reading the 12 days of Christmas um, in Oklahoma. So let me share my document camera. Okay, the 12 days of Christmas in Oklahoma. Written by Tammy Sauer. Dear Addison, are you ready for rodeos, road trips and more? I hope so, because mom, dad, and I have a lot planned for you to see and do during your visit to Oklahoma. I wish I could give you every detail in this letter, but I want your stay to be full of surprises. I will tell you three things. One, don't forget to pack a coat. It's usually cold here in the winter, but Oklahoma's weather can be a little crazy. Yesterday, it was 35 degrees. Tomorrow, it's supposed to be 62 degrees. Second, Come hungry. Mom and dad plan to make Oklahoma's state meal while you're here. This includes fried okra, squash, cornbread, barbecue pork, biscuits, sausage and gravy, grits, corn, chicken fried steak, black eyed peas, and pecan pie. Three, be ready for anything, even a helicopter ride or two, courtesy of my dad. We want you to see as much of Oklahoma as possible. Can't wait for you to get here. Having you with us will make this our best Christmas ever. Your cousin and soon to be Oklahoma tour guide, Ethan. Looks like we got her going through her closet here, packing for her trip. Dear mom and dad, my trip to Oklahoma is off to a great start. As soon as Uncle Jack, Aunt Jen, and Ethan picked me up from the airport, we headed straight for the Chickasha Festival of Light. We went on a carriage ride, drank hot chocolate, ate gooey cinnamon rolls, and soaked up 43 acres of twinkling scenery. I loved the displays and decorated trees, but my favorite part was walking down the crystal pedestrian bridge. I was surrounded by 70,000 lights at once. Just as we were about to leave, Ethan pointed out a scissor-tailed flycatcher, Oklahoma State bird. He was right next to us, perched on the branch of a redbud tree, Oklahoma State trees. I even gave him a name, Snip. When Snip took, fight, took flight, his tail really did open like a pair of scissors. How cool is that? Hugs and kisses from Oklahoma, Addison. P.S. My hugs and kisses just reminded me of something. Guess what Oklahoma State floral emblem is? A mistletoe. How Christmassy. On the first day of Christmas, my cousin gave to me a flycatcher in a red bud tree. Howdy partners, Oklahoma is big on cowboys. I saw the proof at the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum in Oklahoma City. It's the West at its best. After the museum, we went to a real life rodeo. It was held at Guthrie's Lazy E Arena, which is the largest indoor rodeo arena in the world. I loved watching the barrel racing and steer wrestling, but the bull riding was my favorite event. Yeehaw. Ethan told me that Oklahoma once had Wild West shows too. These shows were jam-packed with action, trick performances, and theatrical reenactments. Zach Mulhall, a rancher outside of Guthrie, started his own show called the Congress of Rough Riders and Rovers. His daughter, Lucille, was one of the stars and is celebrated as America's first cowgirl. Not only could Lucille ride and rope, but she taught her horse to do nearly 40 tricks, 
She even trained him how to take off a man's coat and put it back on again. Will Rogers often performed in the show too. His skills and sense of humor made him one of the most popular people of his time. All in all, today was a rip roaring wild ride. Your little buckaroo, Addison. On the second day of Christmas, my cousin gave to me two bucking bills and a flyer catcher in a red bud tree. Dear mom and dad, newsflash, penguins have invaded the city of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Aunt Jen told me uh, that when the Tulsa Zoo wanted to add an African black for the penguin exhibit, it held a fundraiser like no other. Businesses gave big donations. In exchange, each one got a very special delivery, a six foot tall painted penguin sculpture. Ethan and I spotted more than a dozen penguins on our hunt today. I think Snip enjoyed them as much as we did. My favorites were the polka dotted penguin, the policeman penguin, and the oh so grateful, graceful ballerina penguin. But best of all, we even visited the real penguins at the zoo. There's more to Tulsa than penguins though. Ethan said that during the 1920s oil boom, Tulsa was rich, rich, rich. A lot of that money went to creating some really fancy buildings in a cool style called Art Deco. As we walked up and down the street, I almost felt like I was in a fairy tale. Ooing and awing in Oklahoma, Addison. On the third day of Christmas, my cousin gave to me three penguins, two bucking bills, and a flyer catcher and a red bud tree. Dear mom and dad, we spent the day in Stillwater, home of red dirt music. This music got its name from the iron rich red soil found in Oklahoma. And it has a style that's different from anything I've heard before. Mix together some country, folk, blues, Western swing and rock, and you have red dirt music. Consider me a fan. We had lunch at a fun place called Eskimo Joe's, burger, burgers and cheese fries, yum. After that, we headed to the Town and Gown Theater. We saw a great play and even went on, on a backstage tour. I love seeing the set design area and the costume shop. Want to know the best part? Our tour guide told us that some people are convinced the theater is haunted. Sometimes strange footsteps can be heard. Doors mysteriously open and shut. People say they've even heard names being called when no one else is around. Doesn't that sound spooktacular? Your beautiful daughter, Addison. On the fourth day of Christmas, my cousin gave to me four spooky ghosts, three penguins, two bucking bills, and a flyer catcher in a red bud tree. Dear mom and dad, today was filled with wild ride number one. We hit the sky in a helicopter courtesy of Uncle Jack. It was so much fun. I need to get a pilot's license as soon as I'm old enough. Wild ride number two took place after we landed. This time, Aunt Jen was in charge. Hello, dune buggies. The four of us strapped on helmets and went for a ride at Little Sahara State Park near the town of Winoka. Aunt Jen took us up and around the smaller dunes, but we saw some dunes that were 75 feet high. The fine quartz sand at Little Sahara covers over 1,600 acres. It was like being in one giant hilly sandbox. Ethan said that Little Sahara State Park is just one of dozens of state parks in Oklahoma filled with everything from lakes to forests to mountains. A couple of them even have giant waterfalls. Ethan's favorite park is near Wol Wolberton. It's called Robber's Cave State Park. Legend has it that the famous outlaws like Jesse James, Bell Star, and the Dalton Gang use Robber's Cave as one of their hideouts from the law. From dunes to desperados, Addison. On the fifth day of Christmas, my cousin gave to me five golden dunes four spooky ghosts, three penguins, two bucking bills, and a flyer catcher in a red bud tree. Dear mom and dad, these letters are pretty long, right? Okay. Dear mom and dad, today Uncle Jack and Aunt Jen took us on a road trip down Route 66. In case you didn't know, Route 66 is a highway that was built in 1927 to connect Chicago and Los Angeles. It has a couple of names too. Some people call it the Main Street of America. Other people call it the Mother Road. Me, I call it awesome. Our adventures began with lunch at Pops in Arcadia. The restaurant is amazing. It offers nearly 600 kinds of ice cold sodas, plus it has a 65 foot tall neon bottle, a pop towering outside the building. I had a Zuber Fizz grape soda and Ethan had one of the 65 kinds of root beer. Mm-mm, good. 
a little ways down the road, we saw another Route 66 landmark, the Round Barn. We had to check it out. This barn is over 100 years old. It once held livestock. It even held town dances. Now it holds a special spot in Oklahoma's history. Some people love this Route 66 attraction so much, they've even married there. Our next stop was Catoosa. Ethan promised that if I kept my eyes open, I might spot a blue whale. Guess what? He was right. Just outside my window was a smiley 80 foot long whale that was built out of pipe and concrete. As soon as Uncle Jack stopped the car, Ethan and I jumped out and raised straight inside the whale's mouth. When we finally headed for home, Uncle Jack sang show tunes. Of course, Oklahoma was our favorite. Even Snip sang along. One thing's for sure, I got my kicks on Route 66. Vroom, vroom, Addison. On the sixth day of Christmas, my cousins gave to me six cars zooming, five golden dunes, four spooky ghosts, three penguins, two bucking bulls, and a flyer catcher in a red bud tree. Dear mom and dad, did you know Oklahoma has one of the largest American Indian populations of any state? The name Oklahoma comes from two Choctaw words, Okla meaning red and Homa meaning people. Symbols from the Cherokee, Choctaw, Creek, Chickasaw, and Seminole nations can be found on the state seal. Today we went to Anadarko and visited the City USA Cultural Center. My favorite part was getting to see the reconstructed dwellings of the Navajo, Wichita, Kiowa Winter Camp, Cato, Pawnee, Pueblo, and Chiricua Apache. Tribal members and anthropologists helped to make the various villages look authentic. I felt like I was stepping back in time. Ethan says I need to come back to Oklahoma in the summer for the Red Earth Native American Cultural Festival. Over a thousand American Indian artists and dancers gather each year to practice ancient customs and celebrate their heritage. I would love to see the artwork and traditional clothing, but I think I'm most excited to watch the dance competitions. I bet they're amazing. Chipisa Lechike. That means I'll see you soon in Choctaw, Addison. On my seventh day of Christmas, my cousin gave to me seven handmade treasures, six cars of zooming, five golden dunes, four spooky ghosts, three penguins, two bucking bills, and a flyer catcher and a red bud tree. On your mark, get set, go. At noon on April 22nd, 1889, gunshots fired and cannons blasted and bugles sounded across Oklahoma. 50,000 people took off on foot, horseback, and covered wagon. I had one question for Ethan. Why? He told me that President Benjamin Harrison had just declared 2 million acres of land open for settlement and everyone wanted a piece of it. The land run was one of the biggest events in Oklahoma history. Uncle Jack took us to see the Centennial Land Run Monument in downtown Oklahoma City. I could almost hear the thundering horses and taste the clouds of dust. It was easy to imagine the, the determination of those pioneers who raced to stake their claims and start a new life. Ethan's school reenacts the land run each spring. Once I heard that, I decided we needed to have one of our own. We each grabbed a stick and took off to claim plots of land. Thanks to Ethan, I learned some crazy facts about the land run. Fact one, some people cheated. They entered the race early so they could claim the best plots of land. They became known as Sooners because they arrived too soon. Fact two, Guthrie, Oklahoma went from having a few residents that morning to having 10,000 by afternoon. Oklahomans joke that Rome wasn't built in a day, but Guthrie sure was. Staking a claim in Oklahoma, Addison. On the eighth day of Christmas, my cousin gave to me eight horses racing, seven handmade treasures, six cars zooming, five golden dunes, four spooky ghosts, three penguins, two bucking bills, and a flyer catcher and a red bud tree. I feel like these letters are getting longer. Dear mom and dad, did you ever notice that the state of Oklahoma is kind of shaped like a pan? Well, today Uncle Jack flew us to the Oklahoma Panhandle. That's what this part of the state is actually called. And we visited the town of Beaver. Of Beaver. <laughs> Back in 1879, the town was a fur trading post. No one has a different claim to fame. Beaver is known as the cow chip throwing capital of the world. Ha, in case you didn't know, a cow chip is a dried up pile of cow poop. Each spring, people come from all over the world, come from all over to participate in the world championship cow chip throw. These are the rules. The chip must be at least six inches in the diameter. The chip has to be picked from the official dung truck. 
The chip cannot be tampered with in any way. If the chip breaks in flight, the piece that goes the farthest gets counted. Ethan hopes to enter the big event. So we did what we had to do. We practiced. Lucky for Uncle ja Jack, we managed, sorry. Lucky for Aunt Uncle Jack, he managed to duck just in time. And lucky for us, cow chips were easy to find. Ethan says that almost three-fourths of Oklahoma's land is used for cattle grazing and growing crops like winter wheat, hay, corn, peanuts, and pecans. Later, when we stopped at the roadside diner for a snack, I told Ethan I prefer Oklahoma's pecan pies to its cow pies any day. I also love Oklahoma's apple pies and cherry creme pies and pumpkin pies. And, well, you get the idea. Loving cow chips. Addison. On the ninth day of Christmas, my cousin gave to me nine pies of steaming, eight horses racing, seven handmade treasures, six cars of zooming, five golden dunes, four spooky ghosts, three penguins, two bucking bills, and a flower kitchen and a redbud tree. Play it fast. Dear mom and dad, today we toured the National Weather Center in Norman. I find out just how tough Oklahomans can be. Did you know that in May 1999, one of the worst tornadoes in history struck Moore, Oklahoma? The path of destruction was nearly a mile wide. It tossed cars into the sky, left a school in shambles, and destroyed hundreds and hundreds of homes. That wasn't the only twister to hit the state. Oklahoma's in Tornado Alley. This means it gets lots of tornadoes. When conditions are right, a tornado watch is issued. If a tornado is actually spotted, a tornado warning is given. Sirens sound and meteorologists urge people to take shelter immediately. Ethan said his family head straight for their underground storm shelter. They keep water, flashlights, batteries, and a first aid kit and a radio in it at all times. And at Ethan's school, they don't just have fire drills. They have tornado drills, too. This helps kids and teachers know exactly what to do and where to go in case a tornado heads their way. This has definitely been a whirlwind of a trip so far. Your little tornado, Addison. On the 10th day of Christmas, my cousins gave to me 10 twisters twisting, nine pies of steaming, eight horses races, seven handmade treasures, six cars of zooming, five golden dunes, four spooky ghosts, three penguins, two bucking bills, and a flyer catcher and a red bud tree. Dear mom and dad, what weighs almost a ton runs faster than 30 miles an hour and is brown all over? Bison. Uncle Jack said no trip to Oklahoma would be complete without seeing the state animal in the wild. So we took us for a drive through the tall grass prairie reserve near Pahuska. We saw white-tailed deer, coyotes, and just as we had hoped, bison. They were huge. I love their short horns and shaggy winter coats. I wanted to pet one, but Ethan said that that was a terrible idea. Bison maybe look peaceful, but they can be feisty. Oh, and I've got to come back to Oklahoma next, next summer. That's when the state flying mammal the Mexican free-tailed bat comes to Oklahoma to breed. We could be part of a bat watch at Selman Bat Cave near Woodward. As the sun sets, more than a million bats swoosh from the cave and into the sky. They have one thing on their minds, dinner. These bats eat 10, 10 tons of mosquitoes, moths, and beetles each night. And you thought I was a big eater. You're not so bad a daughter, Addison. On the 11th day of Christmas, my cousins gave to me 11 bison grazing, 10 twisters twisting, nine pies of steaming, eight horses racing, seven handmade treasures, six cars of zooming, five golden dunes, four spooky ghosts, three penguins, two bucking bills, and a fire catcher and a red bud tree. Okay. Dear mom and dad, Oklahoma is a great sense of humor. Today we went to Wetumpka, and I learned about something that had happened back in the summer of 1950. A sweet-talking man named F. Bam Morrison persuaded the local residents to put up money to bring a circus to town. The whole town made preparations, and the hotel and cafe even gave Morrison free room and board. Everyone was so excited. A circus was coming. Well, the big day arrived, but guess what? No circus. F. Bam Morrison had tricked the townspeople and snuck off with their money the night before. At first, everybody felt terrible. Then they laughed at themselves and decided to hold a celebration anyway. Nearly ever, every September since, Wetumpka has held a sucker day festival. It's time for everyone to laugh over the day they were kind and have some serious fun. Bands play. Sometimes there are rodeos and talent shows. There was even a parade. Ethan and I were wishing we could be part of it all when something amazing happened. The people of Wetumpka invited us to join their nighttime Christmas parade. It was so cool. Floats with lights, awesome music, and you will never believe the best part of all. 
Santa and Mrs. Claus showed up on Harley's. Ha! They even let Ethan and me catch a ride. Of course, Snip joined in the fun, too. When you pick me up at the airport tomorrow, do you think you could bring a truck? I have a few gifts to bring home. Missing Oklahoma already, Addison. On the 12th day of Christmas, my cousin gave to me 12 flags are waving, 11 bison grazing, 10 twisters twisting, nine pies of steaming, eight horses racing, seven homemade treasures, six cars of zooming, five golden dunes, four spooky ghosts, three penguins, two bucking bills, and a flyer catcher in a red bud tree. Okay, and looks like we got our Oklahoma where the wind comes spooping down the plane. And looks like we got our Christmas, um, all of our Christmas stuff here mentioned throughout the book. Oh, and we got some um, landmarks from Oklahoma. And that is, the 12 days of Christmas in Oklahoma. So thanks for bearing with me. That was a bit of a longer book than I thought. Um, but today we are going to be making some gingerbread. Um, so we already have in your kit, you should have already um, this cutout of a gingerbread. Um, so starting off, you can either cut it out or I think I might just leave mine on the paper. Um, Maybe I'll do that, I'll cut it out at the end. We'll just see what goes on. But in addition to the um, printout that should be in there, you'll need half piece of con black construction paper. Um, you can use little pom-poms or if you have buttons, that works too. Um, or if you have googly eyes, that works. These are just gonna form the eyes and the buttons on the gingerbread. And then of course we need some tissue paper. It can be any color, doesn't matter, whatever you want your gingerbread to be. So I'm going to start by cutting up some pieces of um, tissue paper. And I'm just gonna cut them into strips and then into little um, squares. But, and again, you can make your gingerbread any color you want. It doesn't have to be, you know, gingerbread color. It could be pink or purple or yellow. You can do your favorite color or something like that. Oh, I should also mention you need a pair of scissors and um, a glue stick as well. So just cutting these out. So I might just put some glue down. Oh, no, it's falling over. Um, I might just start by gluing different places to start. I think I'll start with the head here. Glue all over the head. Keep in mind you can cut out um, afterwards. That's why I think I might go outside of the lines a little bit because I can just always cut it out at the end and give it more of the gingerbread shape. Um, but as always, there's, there is a lot of personal decision you can do with this. Um, if you feel particularly drawn to one way to make it or not, of course, feel free to do that. Hopefully you can still hear me because uh, it looks like we're having some. No. Oh, okay. I think we're working now. Okay. I'm going to just basically, if you can hear me, because the speaker is not fully working, it seems like I'm just going to finish decorating this.
Let me try to hurry in case my camera or my speaker stops working here. And Okay, so next I'm just gonna do two little pom-poms for the eyes. I might do some white eyes here. I got two pom-poms here. So those are gonna go like there. Um, those are my eyes. Um, and then I might just draw on a face. So I might take a pink and just draw a little smile here. Whoop, that might not work. Okay, for improvising. Um, I might just take the black construction paper then and do a smile. So. little smaller here. Keep in mind, you can kind of do whatever you want here. If you have a um, a particular vision, you can do that. I am just, um, then I think I might do three mini pom-poms. Oh, looks like we got a fun circular one or um, sparkly one. So I might put that one in the middle just to have a little fun with it. Okay. okay. So next, I think I'm just gonna cut it out. I'm sure you, I assume you guys know how to just cut along the lines here. And then you can add more tissue paper and, <laughs> and cover it better than I did. I did not do a great job, but you know what? It's, it's original, you know? Okay, anyway, your gingerbread turns out perfectly okay. okay. And there is my gingerbread. So So you could even decorate this more, maybe if you wanted more pom-poms on it, or maybe you wanna um, add more tissue paper. Of course, personalize your gingerbread however you want. Um, so thank you so much for spending today with the Oklahoma Hall of Fame um, and happy holidays. Bye.